Hey guys, welcome back. So in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to transform a basic leotard block into a new style that features an asymmetric neckline and chevron paneling. It's a pretty simple tutorial, but it is super, super powerful when creating new styles for the leotard basic block. It's all about cutting the block up into separate panels, which can then either be removed or used for different fabric colors or even fabric types. So before we get started, there are a few things that we actually need. So first, I'm going to download the Top Hip Basic Leotard Pattern Pack, you can to 22, from the designlab.london website. There's a link to this pattern in the top right hand corner now. So the Top Hip Leotard Block is one of five different leg hole st styles to choose from, five. So take a look and find the right pack for you and your project. You can view all of those blocks on the designlab.london website, just simply follow the link now. But don't worry, um, this tutorial will work for all of those five leg hole styles, so you should be fine. Anyway, let's stop wasting time. I'm going to jump onto the Mac and get drafting this leotard block. Okay, let's get started. So I've downloaded the LT003 basic leotard block. It's the top hip leg hole and it's the UK 4 to 22. Uh, I'm just going to, so once I've extracted that, uh, that zip file uh, and the folders on my desktop, I'm just going to double click open that folder, go to editable patterns, Adobe Illustrator format and go to the UK 4 to 22 nested basic leotard block. Let's double click, open that up in Adobe Illustrator, and here is that pack, looking great. So obviously we have all sizes UK 4 to 22, and if we go over to the left hand side here, and I go to layers, you can also find that in window and then layers. Uh, I'm going to then just hide, just make them unvisible, if that's even a word. Uh, so I'm only going to use the UK size 8, so obviously as we remove those, we can only see the UK size 8. Also, it's really important to mention if you're new to digital pattern making in Adobe Illustrator, then we have a whole bunch of free courses and tutorials on the PatternLab.London website that will give you all the tips, tricks, and techniques you need to learn digital pattern cutting in Adobe Illustrator. I highly recommend you take a look at that uh, and learn uh, how to use Adobe Illustrator as a pattern making platform before following these tutorials. Anyway, let's get started. So, I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over the entirety of this pattern here. Uh, also, the labels haven't been selected. We're going to need those. So, I'm just going to go over to my layers over here. And we've just got the lock feature. So, I'm going to unlock it. So, now, these are selectable, which is great. Click and drag over the whole pattern. Go edit, copy. Let's go file, new document. Click create. So, let's just do that again. So, I'm going to go file, new. I'm going to give it 300 by 400 centimeters width and height, just so we've got a lot of space to work with, and click Create. I'm just going to hit Control V on my keyboard to paste those in, and here we have our pattern, full size pattern. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to edit this, I don't want to make changes to this document, because obviously I'm going to ruin that uh, pattern pack, and so I'm just going to simply close this down, click Don't Save, so those layers are still visible when we open up that pack again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of movement here. So I'm going to move these pattern pieces around and put the sleeve, let's say, on the right hand, sorry, the left hand side here. And to do that, really simple. I'm just getting my big selection tool. I'm going to click and drag over the entire element. Let's then click on that point and drag it over to the left hand side, which is great. Also, if uh, some little navigational tools here, hold the shift key on your keyboard, click and drag, and that allows you to move around the board. Hold down the command key on your keyboard and hit plus, and that will zoom in and minus to zoom out, so plus and minus while holding down command will zoom you in and out. Okay, so let's get started. So first of all, I don't want these labels on my pattern because they're going to get in the way. So I'm just going to get my big selection tool, I'm going to click on the, the label, hold down the shift key to queue up my selection, click on the other labels, and let's just drag them all off to the left hand side here. Let's kind of like, you know, put them all together. There we go, looking good. Oh, let's just keep it there. Let's move them off to the left hand side. Also, I'm going to remove the UK 8 signs, but at the moment this pattern's completely grouped. So I'm going to get my big section tool, click and drag over all of these. Let's get the whole pattern here. I'm going to go object and then ungroup, object, ungroup. I'm going to do it about three times. So now these elements should all be independently selectable. I'm going to grab my UK 8. It's going to click and drag that over to the left, big section tool, click, drag. And now we have a nice clean pattern. Also, these lines are a little bit faint. So I'm just going to get my big section tool, select these lines, go to my eyedropper tool, and then select the other guidelines. And that will bring up the attributes for these lines. It will transfer the attributes from this line to this line. OK, next what I'm going to do is get my big section tool. I'm going to click and drag over the entirety of this back panel. And I'm just going to click and drag it over to the right hand side. I'm going to hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal. So we keep that bust uh, line and the waist and the hip in line. 
let's just move it over to this side here. Now I'm going to create a neckline which is basically like an asymmetric, it's a scoop that goes from let's say left to right, uh, so we have one, we only have one sleeve and the other side is completely empty. It's probably best if I just show you rather than try and explain that. So big section tool, click and drag over the whole of this element and I'm going to, because at the moment it's ungrouped so we want to make sure we select everything. So big section tool, click and drag and then I'm going to go um, right click, transform, reflect, so I can reflect that pattern piece and I'm going to click on the vertical, not horizontal, we want vertical, and then copy. I'm just going to click and drag that over to the right hand side, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal. I'm just going to try and merge those two blocks at the center front there. Do exactly the same with the back, click and drag over the whole of the block and I'm just going to right click, transform, reflect and then hit copy and click and drag that, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal, move it over, looking good. Next, I'm a small selection tool, I'm going to click and drag over the outline only. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool over here. You can also find that in Window and then Pathfinder. And I'm going to go to Unite. And if for some reason that doesn't unite, it basically means that let's say this side is not overlapping or it's not touching the other line. So if that is the case and it's not quite there, then just simply get your small section tool, click on one of the lines. If it's the right side, then I'm just going to use my arrow key and just nudge it once and that will give us a very slight overlap and not damage the pattern too much. Then we get my small selection tool, click and drag over both of those and click Unite. I'm going to click and drag, small selection tool, Unite. Okay, so it hasn't actually happened here. So I'm just going to click on that side there, on that line with my small selection tool and then hit the arrow key to the right just to overlap those two panels ever so slightly. Small selection tool, click and drag over both elements and then Unite. I'm going to draw in a center front guideline. So I'm going to get my line tool, just clicking here. Click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And let's do the same for the back. Click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. Let's get our small section tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key, click and drag. Let's get my eyedropper tool and then select the attributes of that line. So this is our guideline, which is looking great. Right, so next we're going to actually start creating uh, this, let's say, neckline. So I'm going to create a point. So I'm going to get my circle or ellipse tool. And let's just double click on the line stroke color. Let's make it 62B4C7, which is just Pattern Lab Blue. And then I'm going to hold down the Shift and Option or Shift and Alt key on my keyboard and then click and drag from that center point. In fact, let's zoom in. I'm going to go to the shoulder point here. I'm going to hold the Shift and Option key and on that shoulder point, I'm going to click and drag so the point emanates from that shoulder point. Let's go to our Line or Stroke options. Let's make it two, so it's a bit bolder and let's remove the dashed line. Great, so I've now located my shoulder point here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this point here, hit the enter key on my keyboard and this will give us some move options. And I'm going to move this about four centimeters to the right. So if I want to go to the left, I would hit minus and it would go to the left. If I want to go to the right, it's a positive move. So it's four plus four. And vertical, we're going to go zero. I'm going to click copy. Now I'm going to go to my rotation tool just over here. I'm going to click on the rotation point just on that shoulder point. I'm going to click and drag until it meets the center of that shoulder line. And so the reason why we're rotating that is so we know that it is always four centimeters away from that shoulder point. And as you can see, if I get my line tool, click and drag, it is four centimeters, which is great. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this point. I'm gonna Command C, Command V. So copy and paste it onto my artboard again. I'm gonna place it at this armhole location on the opposite side of the block. Then I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard zero horizontal and we're going to go down by 0.5. So we're just moving that, that point down by about 0.5 and I'm going to click OK. So here we have our the points at which we're going to draw this curve. I'm going to get my pen tool, I'm going to click on that point there and then I'm going to click and hold, so click and hold and then drag to create a nice smooth curve. Now you can decide how much of a curve you want to create here. Although it is uh, good to mention, obviously if you have quite a dramatic curve, this is your bus point. So obviously there's not much fabric between your bus point and obviously the curve of the block. Also, we're going to have a point uh, on the side seam, so it's generally not a good idea. What I would say is get your Convert Anchor Point tool, click on this handle to move it around, hold down the Shift key and that will lock it to the horizontal and then you can obviously curve that as much as you like. I would do it somewhere in the middle, maybe take it to the center front, but you could also use that center front and move this up ever so slightly to get more of a, a less acute curve. I'm just going to take it to roughly about maybe there, so just eyeball it essentially. You could even measure the distance from this point to this point using the line tool, so if you get your line tool, click and drag, you can see that that's about 
6.79 centimetres. Okay, so there's lots of different ways you can decide this curve. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is, I, so that's, a, that's pretty cool, I'm going to chop this side of the block off so we just have this as our actual panel. But before we do that, I'm going to get my small selection tool, I'm going to, actually no, let's get the pen tool, I'm going to click on this pen, this line, so I'm adding to the line, I'm just going to take it a little bit further outside of the block. And I'm going to go to my small selection tool, click off, get my pen tool, click on that point and take it a little bit further outside the block, which is great. And now I want to do exactly the same to the front that I do to the back, but I want to mirror this. So I'm going to take my big selection tool, I'm going to click on this point, hold down the shift key on my keyboard to queue up the selection, or add to my selection. Click this point, this point, or this line, sorry, and this point. I'm then going to click right, uh, right click, transform, reflect, I'm going to hit copy, and we have a perfect reflection. I'm then going to use this point with my big section tool, click and drag, until it matches that corner point, and this is really important. So we know that it's exactly four centimeters here, it's going to match up exactly the same location. So we have a perfect mirror image. Looking good. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my big section tool, click on the outline, hold down the shift key, click on that new line, not the points, just the line. I'm going to click on outline of this one and this line as well. I'm going to go to the Pathfinder tool and I'm going to go to divide. And what we do is when we click that, it simply uses that line to split the block into two different panels. I can show you that simply by, if I get my big section tool, let's click on this. We want to go object and ungroup. Basically, when you use the divide tool, it groups this pattern to this pattern. So if we just ungroup that, it means that they're now two completely separate items. They're not grouped together. So now I'm going to hit my big section tool, click and drag. I'm going to hit backspace on my keyboard a few times, click and drag over this one, hit backspace on my keyboard a, f keyboard a few times. So now we have some lines that we need to, some guidelines that we want to remove or at least constrain to the existing pattern. So I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click on the outline of these patterns, hold down the shift key to queue up the selection. I'm going to go object and then lock selection. So now we can't edit it, which is great because now I'm going to get my scissor tool and I'm just going to snip the line here and here and also here. I'm going to do the same to the back block. Snip, snip, snip. Great. I'm going to get my small selection tool. I'm going to click, hit backspace a few times, select it, backspace a few times, click on that line, backspace a few times. I'm hitting backspace a few times. If I do it once, we're left with a little attribute here. So you want to hit it, hit the backspace key a couple of times, twice at least. So that is our new neckline for this leotard block and it's looking fantastic. However, I want to also add a little bit of panelling here just to make it a bit more exciting because a neckline is great but we want to add something a little bit more interesting as well. So I'm going to grab this point, I'm going to get my big section tool, click on this point, copy and paste it in and I'm going to start, I'm going to do a chevron detail. I'm going to do it from the bus line at the side seam and let's just copy and paste a new one and I'm going to do it, let's place another point here and let's go, let's move that point down, let's just do this. So I've added a point here, I've copied and pasted a new point and placed it on the center front at the bus line. I'm going to hit the enter key, I'm going to go zero horizontal and I'm going to go down by about seven centimeters. Click OK. Now you can change this, you can make it as deep as you want or as shallow as you want, it's up to you. You can even eyeball it. You can let's say click this point, drag it down, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. You can move it down as far as you like. But I'm going to go about, where was it, seven centimeters. I'm also going to click on this point, hold down the Option key or Alt key on my keyboard and drag this across the bus line, hold down the Shift key to lock it to the horizontal. I'm going to drag it to that point. If it's not quite on that side seam, just use the arrow keys so I can nudge it right and left with my arrow keys. That looks good. So next I'm going to get my point pen tool. I'm going to click on this point, click on this point and click on this point. Then I'm going to get my small section tool. I'm going to click on this line here. In fact, no, let's get the pen tool. I'm going to click on this point and just extend that line ever so slightly. Go to my small selection tool, click off, pen tool, click. Let's extend that a little bit to there and then small selection tool to click off. I'm going to do the same chevron on the back panel as well. So I'm going to select this point here, so big selection tool. Select this point, hold down the shift key, select this point, hold down the shift key still. Select, select the line. I'm then going to simply, I don't need to transform this or reflect it because essentially it is a symmetrical shape. I'm just going to simply hold down the Option key on my keyboard to duplicate this, click and drag, hold down the Shift key to lock it to the horizontal and just drag it across until that side seam point matches. 
And if it's not quite matching, just use the arrow key on your keyboard to nudge that along to get it in the right position. Perfect. I'm going to do the same on the sleeve. So we have a sleeve on this side because we have an armhole. So we have a sleeve that matches. I'm going to get this point and I'm just going to hold down the option key. I'm going to click and drag it over to the, the sleeve. I'm just going to match it up at the side seam. If it doesn't quite match, just move it into position. Now this is important to have these two points matching because this is the point these two are going to touch. So therefore, this is going to be roughly in the same position as the chevron. So it's going to start in the same position. So just make sure that these two are aligned. I'm going to grab this point, hold down the Option key to duplicate it, drag it off to the left-hand side, hold down the Shift key as well to lock it to the horizontal, and let's just use the arrow keys to nudge it into position. I can even take this point, hold down the Option key, click and drag, and then take it to the center of, or the, the top line of that arm. And now I can get my pen tool, I'm going to click, and click, and click to create my chevron. And you know what, I'm going to go a little bit further here. Let's just extend that out. Go to my, and let's go back to the pen tool, click on that point, extend it out a little bit further. Now this might be a little bit too, um, too deep. I might want to reduce this, make it a little bit smaller, maybe go in the opposite direction. You know, it could be quite an interesting concept. You can do that simply by getting a small section tool, clicking on the line, then clicking on the point, and then click, hold, and drag. Hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical and you can just simply drag this as much as you like. So I'm going to take it up, probably about there. Once again you can always measure from this point to this point just by placing a point, hitting the enter key, zero horizontal, let's go, I don't know, we can make it five vertical, hit OK and there would be five centimeters from that um, underarm line. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to split my block up I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm just going to click and drag over all of this. Uh, okay, so these lines are unlocked. They're locked at the moment. We can't actually edit them. So I'm just going to go to Object, Unlock All. That should make them editable, which it is. Let me just click and drag over all of this. I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just click and drag it a lot over to the left so it's a bit closer. Now, I'm going to do this all at one go. So I'm going to get my big section tool. I'm going to click. I'm now going to separate these panels. Big section tool, click on the outline, click on the line. Hold down the Shift key while you're doing this. So select all these lines just by holding down the shift key and clicking on them with the big selection tool. Go to my pathfinder and I'm going to go to divide. And this will divide them all up. So we now have completely separate panels, which is fantastic. But once again, um, if I click on my big section tool or click on this, they're all grouped together because we divided them together. So I'm just going to big section tool, click on the outline, object, ungroup. So now they're all completely separate. However, Problem is, if we move this, we're going to lose our grain lines. But also, these lines overlap, so I'm going to now start separating these up as well. So I'm going to get my big section tool, click on this outline, click on this outline. I'm going to click on all the pattern outlines. I'm going to go Object and then Lock Selection. Get my scissor tool, and I'm just going to snip. Snip, snip, snip. Okay, we can't snip this one because it's underneath this little circle. So you can either remove the point just by selecting it and hitting backspace, and that way we can get to it. Or you can select the line, then go to your cut tool, and then you're cutting that line. But let's just snip the rest of these as well. So snip, snip. Great stuff. I think that's everything. So now let's go object and then unlock all. And now with my big section tool, I can click and drag over this, all of the elements that are for the top of this sleeve pattern. Object and then lock selection, but that's also command two or control two. So I'm going to use that as a shortcut. Ah, sorry, that was, <laughs> that was locking. Uh, I need to group. Big section tool, click and drag over all the elements. <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Object, group. Click on this bottom piece here. I'm going to go command G or control G with them selected to group them as well like so. Big section tool, click and drag over these top elements here. I'm, gonna, I'm missing these lines, so I'm just going to get my big selection tool, hold down the shift key, click and click to add to my selection. Notice I'm not using the points here, I don't want to add them to my selection. Object, group. Same for the bottom, select all these elements, command G or control G to group them. The bottom pieces, command G, control G to group them. It's really good to use shortcuts, it speeds things up dramatically. So really speed and take some time to get used to those shortcuts and use them regularly. So big section tool, click and select all of these. Don't forget the little notch here. Hold down the shift key, click that notch, 
object and then group, but also it's Command G or Control G on your keyboard. So now we should have a whole bunch of pattern pieces that have got all their lines, which is great. They're all grouped. Maybe move them around just to check. And we're doing that using the big selection tool. Just click and drag, click and drag. And then you can hit Command Z to go back. So if you move it away, hit Command Z to move it back into position. Great, so now what we'll do is I'm gonna get rid of these little blue points. We don't actually need them anymore. So I'm just gonna click and drag over my blocks. Hold down the Shift key to click on all of these. Let's just go Object and then Lock Selection. Obviously I didn't include my points in that selection. Click and drag over everything. That's all the points selected. Hit Backspace a few times. And we now have our pattern without any of the bits and pieces, which is great. So next what I'm gonna do is uh, I am going to, at the moment, this has got a purple fill, and the reason why, or a purple line, and the reason why is because it was taken from our existing um, UK 4-24 pack, and the UK 8 is actually, uh, has a purple colour to um, <clears throat> make it different, or show that it's different to all the other sizes. So I'm going to get my magic wand, which is just here, it's Y on your keyboard. I'm going to click on the line, and this should select everything, and then going to go to my fill colour, double click on my line color and then click and drag down to black, click OK and now this should all be black, which it is, which is great. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some labels to this. So you know what, I'm going to, um, <clears throat> let's grab my center front fold line. At the moment this is grouped, I probably want to ungroup these, so big section tool, click, object, ungroup, so now we can move them around independently. So I'm not going to put the center front fold line in there because obviously, you know, this is an asymmetric block. So that can actually just become center front. I'm going to click and drag that and move it over to here. I can then Command C, Command V, copy and paste it. Let's place it in the back. We can then move it into position with arrow keys. Now this is not the center front. This is the center back. And to select it or to edit it, you just get your small selection tool, double click, we can put in center back. Now we've got two panels here, the upper panel and the lower panel. So I'm going to copy and paste a new one in and then place that on the upper panel as well. Same for this one, copy and paste. Let's place it on the upper panel as well. And we can, let's not worry about this one, that's the top arm line, but we can forget about that. Let's get one of our labels and let's do some editing. Okay, so this is a UK 8 pattern, which is great. It's, uh, and let's work, start with the, let's make, call this the upper front panel and we're going to do cut one pair because essentially this is a double layer um, leotard, in other words it's made of two layers and then we can, so these are unfortunately not in alignment so we can just get our small section tool, click and drag we can then go to center, align center and then we can also align them uh, to the center as well just going to click and drag these over and that looks pretty decent I'm just going to simply get my big section tool, click and drag, and then move this to the various parts of our block. Now this might be a little bit too large, this label, so I could always just move it. Go to my free transform up here, click and drag, hold down the shift key to constrain the proportions. So holding the shift key constrains those proportions. Click and drag into position. I can then copy and paste this. We could paste it here as well. And get our small section tool, we can click and drag this grain line. Although, let's get the small section tool, click and drag. And then we can just click and drag and move these points up. Same with this one, click and drag over the whole bottom bit. Click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal, sorry, the vertical. We didn't actually need to change that one, there we go. And looking great. I'm going to do this for the rest of these pattern pieces. Obviously don't forget, so this is upper front. This needs to be lower front panel. Let's take this, copy and paste it onto the back panel here, and we call this lower back, copy and paste. This can be upper back panel, and then small section tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical, looking great. And we can do the same to the sleeve as well, copy and paste this. Let's find a nice position for it, that's not too bad. We can call this upper sleeve panel. Copy, paste this down. Oops, move it to position. We can call this lower sleeve panel. And then small selection tool, click and drag. Click and drag this down. 
Let's zoom out. Okay, great. And you know what? I can uh, also take my UK8s here. And okay, so these are purple also. So let's just get the magic wand. Click on this. And then let's go to the fill color. Let's make it black. And then let's go our small section tool. Select this. Select this. Hold down the shift key to queue up that selection. And let's go to double click on the fill. Make it black. Perfect. Let's zoom out. I can then get my big section tool. Click on this element. Hit copy. And I can just hit paste. And I can move it anywhere. Let's paste another one. We can add this one here if we want. You don't need to add this everywhere, but you know, it depends. It's up to you really. I'm just simply pasting and then moving them into position. There we go. And we can even, if you want to be consistent, I'm going to grab big section tool, click on this element, click on this element, and then let's just line these up. Same with this one. Let's line these up. Move it over a little bit. Okay, so now, because obviously these are all individual elements at the moment, <clears throat> I'm going to get my big section tool, click and drag over the whole lower part of this block, go object, and then group. Let's click on the upper block. And then let's go Command G or Control G to group. Same with this one. Command G, lower blocks, Command G, upper block, Command G, Command G. And now they're all completely separate panels, which is amazing. And they're all grouped and it's all looking fantastic. So next what I'm doing is I'm going to add a little bit of seam allowance just to finish off this pattern. So let's just move these apart because obviously we need space for seam allowance. We can also move these over. And now let's get our small selection tool. I'm going to select just the outline of all of these panels. Okay, just the outline, none of the other lines. Then I go to object, path, offset path, 0.6 centimeters, because that is essentially what my overlocker takes. Click OK. Then while it's still selected, go to stroke. Let's go to two points. And there we have our finished pattern pieces. And it should all be grouped, which is looking good. And that is how we transform a leotard block into, let's say, an asymmetric neckline. And we also have that chevron in there as well. You can add as many panels as you like using that technique where you just simply divide the block using the pathfinder. Okay, that's it from me, guys. Don't forget to like this tutorial, subscribe to our channel, and also turn on your notifications. There is loads more coming up, and we launch a new digital pattern making tutorial each week, so make sure you don't miss out. Also, make sure you leave us a comment below. We love hearing your feedback. It makes our day. Anyway, check out our Instagram channel for product launches, behind the scenes, and much, much more. It's kind of like the hub of where everything really happens day to day. Anyway, guys, take care, have a fantastic weekend, and I will see you again next week for a new tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.